it's with great pleasure I like to introduce our own uh, immigration specialist lawyer, Mr. Don Susanta Katukambala in our studios this morning. Good morning and welcome to our program. Good morning, Derek. I born. I born. Uh, Susanta, first of all, on Tuesday the budget was announced. Were there any changes? Uh, it was expected that there'll be major changes to immigration planning levels in the budget 2018-19. Uh, but fortunately, uh, there aren't major changes. And uh, so finally, the government uh, settled with uh, the old planning levels, that is to bring about 200,000 immigrants to this country in the year 2018-19 financial year. The budget is an important event that the government decides the planning levels for migrants coming to this country in each financial year. So that's the key point. And that point is uh, uh, implemented by uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, uh, the Minister of Immigration, and the Department of Home Affairs. And uh, so it is as usual, the planning levels, but uh, there are changes to the laws. It's very complex um, and uh, more changes to be expected from uh, July 2019. Okay. Uh, so, Sandra, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, the uh, temporary visa fees were uh, reduced. Am I right on that? Uh, it has been reduced only for religious workers. And uh, if you apply for temporary work visa, the new class uh, f uh, for temporary work visa is 482. Mm -hmm. used to be 457. And the 482 visa uh, uh, requires a fee. Uh, it's a fee for training, training contribution, we call it. Yeah. And uh, it used to be that uh, each sponsor need to make a contribution to an uh, acceptable training organization. Uh, that's been abolished from March this year, and the government has introduced something called a Skilling Australia Fund. Mm -hmm. So each company or an organization that sponsors people need to contribute to that Skilling Australia Fund. If you are sponsored uh, for uh, uh, permanent 186 or 187 visa, and that's a requirement uh, uh, by the employer and employee, and if, if you sponsor a temporary visa holder under 482 visa, that's a requirement by an employer. And that's been uh, exempted uh, for religious organizations to bring religious workers. Mm -hmm. But every other organization will have to uh, pay this contribution. But when you talk about the fees, the budget reflects the importance of the fees that is earned from the immigration. So the immigration visa fees in total is going to be $2.5 billion. Okay. $2.5 billion in this financial year. Okay. It's about over $300 million increase compared to last financial year. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the government is earning money directly from each visa applicant. Uh, correct. And yeah. also, there's direct economic benefit of each immigrant coming to this country. Yeah. And also, indirect e economic benefit. That all the economists uh, suggested that the immigration is very important to this country. So the, unfortunately, um, the politics in this country has been divided in immigration and, um, and certain... Uh, parties in the government uh, and political parties were pushing to curb immigration. Mm. But fortunately, the treasurer, uh, the driver of the economy, Mr. Scott Morrison, yeah. was very pro-immigration. He was supporting, he was the former immigration minister. Yeah. He was the former head of Tourism Australia. And, um, and he's got a vision. He said that uh, for this country to grow, immigration is important. Yeah. So therefore... The vision came out, and uh, so the immigration is continuing in this financial year. And also the intake of doctors, has that been increased? Uh, yes, the government made a special policy, an announcement in this budget, so that the government was to bring doctors uh, in uh, areas in need, especially mm -hmm. general practitioners, uh, over 2,000 general practitioners to be brought to the areas in need each financial year from this year. So that's an important thing, good news for doctors who want to come in and, yeah. and good news for uh, the public because the government uh, 
is concerned about the, the health services in the country. And if we can't uh, fulfill the requirements in the local labor market, I think we need to bring people, especially there's a shortage, always a shortage in doctors yeah. and nurses in this country. And also in the hospitality industry, and that's unfortunately not been accepted uh, uh, publicly, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a huge shortage of uh, chefs and the cooks uh, and the pastry chefs in the hospital industry. So we hope that there'll be concessions. Mm -hmm. Because in this country, in Australia, we have a legal workforce. And even the temporary workers, the students or any other temporary visa holders need to work legally. Everything is connected. Yeah. If you compare with the U.S., yeah. U.S. has uh, United States of America has about 12 million illegal people working. And the 12 million illegals fulfill lots of positions in the hospital industry yeah. and the construction industry. But everyone working in the construction or hospitality in this country, they have to be legal. Yeah. So therefore, it's important to have avenues migration avenues to bring the right people, right skills for these uh, positions. And uh, we hope the changes will come to support the, the areas of need. Anyway, thank you, Susanta. Uh, and it's always been very interesting talking to you and uh, also giving your valuable time for us. And uh, let me wish you all the very best. Thank you very much, Ibo and Ivan.